discussing the issues and celebrating the successes of the African-American community. This is Another View. Hello everyone, I'm Barbara Ham Lee and this is Another View. According to the most recent U.S. Census report, there are a million black owned businesses in the United States that bring in more than one billion dollars in sales. Now that census was taken before the recession, which begs the question, how are black businesses faring in this economic climate? What's being done to encourage entrepreneurship? What kind of help is available to help companies make it through? One source of help is the Virginia Black Expo 2009. It's here in Virginia Beach this weekend. Joining me to talk about it is Gary McCants, publisher of Black Pages USA and presenter of the Expo. Karen Brace, owner of the Remedy Hair Salon, and one who has been helped by the Expo. Warren Harris, Director of Economic Development for the City of Virginia Beach, the host city for this year's Expo. And Tanya Perkins, a Vice President with Wachovia Bank, which is a sponsor of Black Expo 2009. Welcome to the program, everybody. Thank, Thank you for joining you. So Gary, I'm going to start with you. What is the state of black business in uh, this economy today? It's a great question. Uh, I think black business mirrors the general public in terms of business opportunities in terms of the economy, uh, but one glaring statistic is that more African Americans are starting business at a faster rate than any other ethnic group in the country. Even now? Absolutely. Even with the day, today's Absolutely. economic climate? Absolutely. Why do you think that is? Uh, shift in economic climate, shift in, uh, in terms of corporations, uh, transition and people transition out of corporate America, uh, certainly. Uh, you've got a number of entrepreneurs here who are looking to expand their business. And I think people look at the, 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 the true American dream now as entrepreneurship. It used to be owning a home, now it's entrepreneurship. Is that what you're finding also, Warren? I mean, as you bring in business to the city of Virginia Beach, do you look specifically at times for uh, minority businesses, for black businesses, or are you trying to get everybody? Well, here? I'm trying to get everyone, <laughs> of course, yeah. Cause, but to, to piggyback a little bit on, on Gary's point there, I mean, we are uh, seeing a, a, a phenomenal issue here in our economy. The, the access to credit, the access to resources to help fund businesses are a major challenge for all businesses. But it becomes particularly more challenging for smaller businesses because they do not necessarily have the track record or have you know the necessary skill set or uh, abilities to uh, to have that access to credit so uh, functions like the black expo uh, governance, governments like city of virginia beach embracing and encouraging entrepreneurship or small women and minority owned businesses to mm -hmm. really step out there and, and 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 do their their own thing it's really where the shift in the dynamics in the business market is going and so we're seeing small business as an important component part of our community and we feel it's very important as a city to embrace small businesses and do the necessary things within government to attract those businesses to our city. Now the Black Expo has been in the Hampton Roads area for five, five years. years. This Absolutely. is the fifth, fifth year, year coming up, right? Um, and Karen, I know you've been a part of the Expo since the very beginning. Now you yes. own your own company. Yes. Yeah, the Hair Remedy. The Remedy, Remedy Hair, Hair Salon. Salon sorry. Yes. <laughs> and um, what has the Expo been able to do to help you in terms of building your business? When I first went to the uh, Black Expo in 04, it was my first year owning the business. I moved from Maryland. So the clientele base that it bought me was tremendous. I still have clients that came from the Expo in 04. And all they need to do is tell one person, and they tell one person. So it built my clientele base so phenomenal. So for you, it was the exposure. It was the exposure. That, that helped. Gary, what is the, the major function of the Expo? Is it to give black businesses exposure or is it to bring uh, exposure on the other side like with the municipalities and so it's forth? It's a combination of both. I mean obviously we celebrate entrepreneurship during the three or four day event but you know for a new business just coming into the area it gives you a chance to meet all the movers and shakers. I mean people can make important decisions about your business whether it's in terms of financing, whether it's in terms of where you relocate your business. So there's a wealth of information uh, throughout the week uh, of the uh, Black Expo activities. Mm -hmm. And so, but your whole point is to show the public as well as those Absolutely. who do business, business to business a type activities. Absolutely. We're, we're really trying to show the public that there are entrepreneurs, particularly African American entrepreneurs, who have great products and services who can provide those same kind of services anybody else can provide in our community. And you, you know, got the local community here, Hampton Roads, but you also have people coming in from outside of the region to look at Hampton Roads as a place to do business. To bring their businesses Absolutely. here. 
Yeah. Absolutely. Do you have any statistics on how, how many businesses may have relocated here because of? Uh, that's a yes, good sir. question, and we're still doing some research. We'll probably have uh, some compilation and some surveys coming up after this fifth year. Okay, okay. Tanya, Wachovia is a major sponsor. Why? Why what, is the, what does Wachovia think that it gets out of sponsoring something like this? That's an excellent question, Barbara. We are definitely committed to partner with the Black Expo. This is our fourth year serving as a sponsor. So we're very pleased for the par to have the partnership in place. And we understand the importance of providing the education, the access, because we understand that providing the education around being financially savvy, making sound financial decisions, impacts families for generations. So we partner very well with the Black Expo and other markets as well, uh, such as South Carolina, North Carolina, and Florida. So it's truly a partnership. Mm -hmm. So it gives us an opportunity to really I guess give us the opportunity to meet with our clients and the communities in which we serve, the businesses that we serve as well. So it gives us a great opportunity to really fulfill our mission. Now I know your your job is banking relationships with businesses yes. and so forth, and, and I'm I'm not going to put you on the spot here, but I guess I am a little bit <laughs> okay. because because the fact of the matter is, at least from what I hear, you know, getting credit is you know very very tough for businesses. I would imagine if someone does not have a long track record, that makes it even tougher. So what is the message that you're trying to send or your organization is trying to send to people who attend the expo? I mean, can they walk in there thinking that maybe they might really get a shot at getting the financing they need? Absolutely. I think the message is that we're here. We're here to serve and we're here to not only provide, you know, the financing but be consultants to really help um, companies fulfill their goals, to understand where they are, if they're starting their business through the SBA, we're a great SBA lender. We're actually number one in the company in the country, rather. So we definitely are here to say to people, we are here, and we are here to serve you. We are here to provide financial products and services that will help your business flourish. Do you also help people if you see that they aren't quite there yet? In mm -hmm. other words, giving them advice on on how to beef up their portfolio or whatever it is that they need to do. Absolutely. We, you know, I personally suggest having a very strong CPA, having an attorney, and having a strong banker. You have those mm -hmm. three behind you, you certainly have some of the tools to be successful. Mm -hmm. So definitely, um, if we meet with a, if I meet with a client and I realize they're not quite ready to meet their ultimate goal, then I sit down and we map out a plan. You know, we really map out a plan to get them where they want to be. Mm -hmm. So that is what I do. I serve as a consultant, and I think that the bank allows me to be independent in that regard. I certainly have to abide by certainly policies and, and procedures, but mm -hmm. I know that ultimately my goal is to help businesses. What do you find when you look particularly at black businesses as a major, um, and, I, and I ask this of all of you all, as a major stumbling block, if you will, to to that success that these business people are looking for. And Tanya, I'm going to start with you. From your perspective, what's, what are the things that people are coming to the table missing? I think a strong financial business plan, not having a true business plan in place. You know, an idea is great. You know, having ideas is the first step. You know, but having a true mapped out plan. And also going back to what I said just a moment ago about having a CPA, a store, or maybe a strong bookkeeper, depending on where they are, mm -hmm. and also have an attorney, a strong business attorney that can advise them to really do it the right way, you know, so they're not having to face any repercussions down the road. So, and also having a strong partnership with their banker, you know, really talking to your banker before you make those steps, before you go out and you buy the inventory. Let's talk about how this is going to affect your financial picture. Mm -hmm. Talking about cash flow, talking about how what you want to do will affect cash flow. Ultimately, that's what's going to pay back that loan that you need. So really educating the businesses around what we're looking for you know, from a banking perspective, I think is, you know, valuable, very valuable. Okay, so education is one area. Mm -hmm. Warren, what would you say? Well, I would add, that, that's key. The business plan is very important. I mm -hmm. think two areas I would also add to that would be having a, a, a true expectation. I mean, do not expect with a startup business to reach your ultimate financial goal within one year. You have to have a steady plan and build on that plan to reach that that ultimate success so I think you need to be real to yourself and real to the abilities of your company or business mm -hmm. you know to get you to where you want to be the other is you know do your market research I mean if you have a product that there are hundreds of others <laughs> selling that other product mm -hmm. I mean understand the demands and the competitive nature 
that you're operating in. And so you may have to position your business or position your product to be unique to the competition in which you're, you're operating under. So, you know, those two areas uh, I think are, are really uh, and very important to, to the entrepreneur and to the business to really think through and really understand and have those re reality checks with not only with your expectations on, on your revenues, but also investing in your company by doing the market research and, and, and advertising. And Karen, I see you nodding your head over there. Yeah. Some of this is really ringing <laughs> true yeah. with you, isn't it? The market research is, is a big point with hair salons because actually if you look, there's a hair salon almost everywhere. Mm -hmm. So you have to stand out from the crowd in hair salons. So I went further and became a licensed instructor. I'm also a national educator for Influence Hair Care product line, which means I can go all over anywhere he sends me, United States, overseas, and educate other stylists on how to use the product line, mm -hmm. not just the consumer. So you found that in order to make your business grow, you had to kind of branch out into other areas, yes. still with your core base. Still with my core base. My next step is trichology, which means that I'm studying hair and scalp and it gets into the medical field. And these things are very important. It stands out from just a regular cosmetologist. And did you learn all this from the expo? <laughs> 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 the expo actually set me in motion for all of these things. It really did. At first, I was just a cosmetologist. And then when I came into the expo, when uh, Mr. McCants called me and asked me to do Nia Long's hair, I knew that I needed to expand a little more. And I started expanding even more. And then people start noticing you. And that's when the owner of Influence Hair Co Product asked me to work with his team. So it all, so the it all really falls have been right down, right, yes. Very important for Very you. important. Gary, what do most people come, when they come to the expo and their expectation, they're, they're all gung-ho about joining, starting this business. <laughs> do they leave even more gung-ho or, or do they leave with a yeah, reality I, I check? Think a lot more gung-ho. I think, I think what we have to understand that entrepreneurship is a scary proposition for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you worked in corporate America for you know, 25, 30 years, and then you're trying to go out on your own to create this dream that you've had for all your life, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, it's very competitive. I mean, certainly. I know, especially those of us who are counting on that paycheck every two oh, weeks. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> every two weeks, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, 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 it's the transition for a lot of people going from uh, being an employee uh, to owning your own business. And that's a real difficult thing because now you've got to learn a whole new environment of how to do business and everything everybody said up here is absolutely true let me ask you too because i've talked with some entrepreneurs in the area who are more established than others and sure. one of the the mm, frustrations that they may have is that they feel that the expo is really focuses a lot on the startup and the mm -hmm. the newer businesses if you will um, but do you have a cadre of people who are willing to mentor oh, those others absolutely I, I would say that those individuals they need to come first of all and I think when they come, they'll find there's more value than just, you know, dealing with startup business, which is very, very important because mm -hmm. that helps move, move the economy. Mm -hmm. But in terms of all the activities that go on with some of the uh, networking activities, we have a breakfast coming up on Thursday morning. There's an opportunity for you to share ideas, meet people who may be in the same industry, maybe talk to individuals that may want to expand their business. So there, there are all kinds of things going on during the week of the expo. Mm -hmm. So those individuals who say, hey, just for startup, not necessarily true, but we want those senior uh, uh, business owners to be a part of what we're doing. You know, something else I found curious, um, mm -hmm. and that is that you have a lot of entertainment sure. um, involved also. Is that a, a marketing yeah. ploy to get people to come? <laughs> or I, I guess I'm just trying to understand how, if, if this is supposed to be about business, not that business can't be yeah. fun, right. don't misunderstand me, right. but, but, but the entertainment aspect of it, why, why is that necessary? Well, some of the entertainment is there because we draw in different kinds of people. Some people may not come for the business aspect. They may come for the entertainment, but we've got them there that we can educate them about the business aspect. Also, gotcha. entertainers, they're Our business, business owners. Some yeah. of them are business people. I mean. Mm -hmm. Neil Long, we've had people come in here, uh, LL, I mean, this year, Mars Chestnut and, and Lisa Ray. These folk are in business, and obviously with, you know, the business of entertainment, they're looking for ways to expand some of their knowledge and some of the things that they're doing also. So mm -hmm. 
a lot of different things for a lot of different people at the expo. You know, Barbara, one mm -hmm. of the things that's also tied to the expo, and we've made a, a very conscious effort uh, in terms of the cities to to to, uh, to leverage the, the, the expo. That's my next question right. because all of the cities, the right. seven are, cities, are, are participating. Involved, right? Yeah, and, and one, uh, there are seminars uh, associated with the expo, and and for the established business owner uh, that's looking to do business with the cities. Right. There is a, a seminar uh, that's uh, being held uh, in, in advance of the uh, expo at 10 o'clock with the uh, purchasing departments of all of the cities. And so there are purchasing agents within each city that's going to be there in a panel discussion to talk about how existing businesses looking for business within the city governments, how they can gain access to some of those awards, some of those contracts that the cities are doing. In addition to that, as you mentioned, you know, each of the cities have combined their resources to be a part of the expo. Mm -hmm. And what we've done is looked at inviting out-of-town business owners and businesses to come to Hampton Roads. And so to see what Hampton Roads is like as a city, as a place to expand or grow your business, and we're going to use this as an opportunity to um, to entertain and, and expose them to some of the real assets that we have here as a as Now, a are region. these minority businesses these that you're inviting, right. inviting to the city right. to, to be uh, To the region. To and mm -hmm. so another uh, session within the expo is uh, what we're calling the Hampton Roads presentation, where each of the cities are going to present their you know, hot buttons or their wow factors, if you will, about what it's like to do business in each of the cities. And if once you hear that message in its totality, you can really see, you know, the Hampton Roads is a viable location for businesses that are well established, for businesses that are starting up, for those that are looking to get into entrepreneurship to really base your business or grow your business in our community. Absolutely. That is fantastic. Um, you came up with this idea. You do the expo around the country. Right. Uh, throughout the South, at least. Southeast, right, now. right. Um, Southeast. Where did the idea come from? Why are you doing this? Well, the Black Expo has been around for a number of years, but we decided to do it because of the black pages that we published, and it just was a natural fit to transition from Black Pages USA to the Black Expo. And mm -hmm. it gives us an opportunity to meet and greet our customers face to face and gives them a chance to meet the audience uh, face to face so they can really sell and promote their products and services. So it was just a natural fit for us. Mm -hmm. yeah. So give me a feel for when you come, when you walk in the doors, Karen. What is it like? What do you see? What do you, I've been to some of the breakfasts and that kind of thing, but I haven't <laughs> been to the actual expo. It's so. sort of like a trade show where everyone has their booths set up and they have a wealth of information for you. Anything you, from job opportunities to just what the business does itself. Mm -hmm. And it's just a lot of, I mean, I'm rushing to get my booth because I want to get a good booth. It's so many. So it's wonderful. It is one. This is the best advertising that I've ever done. It's fun. Yes. It's the funnest advertising <laughs> ever. <laughs> I'm not paying for this one. <laughs> Definitely. But it's wonderful. And, and to go back on what Warren was saying also, mm -hmm. there's actually contracting for me as a cosmetologist right. for government. So, and wow. that a lot of stylists don't know that. So I'm going to that class. So what kind of opportunities are there? That's well, interesting. Like uh, Virginia State had a contract for a stylist to open a salon and start off one. So when the government has a facility and it has a hair salon in it, they will advertise for a stylist to come and open I that see. salon, I to see. run that salon. So there are many different different areas that people don't even yeah. think about. Well, yeah, you think about some of the uh, the work that the cities do. I mean, you know, whether they are within, the, you know, correctional facilities or whether they're human service mm -hmm. needs or, you know, they call on resources. You know, we, mm -hmm. we, we don't know as government how to do those services, and we contract them to, through the private sector, yeah. and it's a great opportunity to learn about some of those niches that aren't readily known to the general public, but if you're there and understand how to position yourself for these awards or these contracts, mm -hmm. it's just another way of your business getting a jump on, you know, providing that revenue stream to support and sustain mm -hmm. your company. Yeah. Gary, I know we talked about, you know, you need to have a business plan and you need to, you know, have a lawyer and a, and a CPA and a good banker and right. so forth. But in the midnight hour, when you're sitting there thinking about your business, either starting it or, or if you're already in it and you're thinking about growing it and so forth. Tell me some of the questions that you're asking yourself. What, do, what are you talking, <laughs> how are you talking to yourself? What are you saying? Oh, I'm thinking about cash flow, I'm, I'm praying, doing a lot of that. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it's, it's a I guess what I'm trying yeah. to get to is, yeah. is if somebody is, is really struggling with this and they're yeah. trying to decide, am I the kind of person yeah. that can get out and do my own business? What kind of questions do they need to ask? And I want to get this from you and from Karen. Um, and you too, if you guys want to kick in, but, but these two who own businesses, I'm just very curious. Well, I, I think the key thing is I, I've been in business for 20 years, so, I mean, the questions I ask yes, myself mm -hmm. is, 
you know, can I survive as an entrepreneur? Mm -hmm. And can I make the kind of income that I was used to making when I was in corporate America or make more? So, I mean, there are all kinds of questions that you ask yourself when you deciding to make that decision about uh, going into business. I mean, it's, it's, it's a tough transition, as I said earlier. Mm -hmm. I mean, you have a lot to think about. You got to think about if you had a family, you know, what transition does your family have to make? You know, how much money do you need to, to, to secure in order to start that business? You know, who are some of the folk that you can network with in order to help you grow your business? I mean, who, who can you counsel with? I mean, all kinds of questions. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not going to be answered overnight, unfortunately. Uh, it's a transition. You have to continue to work at it, keep working on it. You're going to meet all kinds of people. Who yeah. have all kinds of things to say. I'm Absolutely. Sure. Well, the biggest challenge yeah. I've heard, too, for the small yeah. business, yeah. once they get at a, a certain yeah. level, I mean, uh, it, it's termed, how do I make payroll? Yeah. Because now it's not only what yeah. you need to do Absolutely. for your own personal, but there are lives that are dependent on yeah. the mm -hmm. performance of that company. And so you have to, you know, think about yeah. your staff and your employees and, yeah. You know, and support yeah. them. And I think one of the points I'm that Tanya made here. earlier, and I think is very key, I mean, we're talking about the positive nature of entrepreneurship, but one of the best advice sometimes is to tell someone you're not ready. Mm -hmm. That's a, yeah, yeah. That's that's a solution. You know, and I'm sure, yeah. you know, Tanya can really yeah. has seen probably a lot of great ideas and a lot of great plans. Mm -hmm. right. But are they truly ready to go into the, the you know, the, the private sector and, and launch? And the best advice sometimes okay. I think we can make Good is that question. you're not ready. All right. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time and we got to move <laughs> on. But the, the expo is this Saturday. Um, from 11 to 7, am I 11 right? 11 to 7, 11 absolutely. to 7 at the Virginia Beach uh, Com uh, Conference Center. And um, there's the number up on your screen if you want to call for more information. Thank you so much Thank you, for joining us. We Thank really you. appreciate it. Best of luck at the Expo. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you. <laughs> appreciate it. Um, let's see, where are we here? That's our thanks to Gary McCants, Karen Brace, Warren Harris, and Tanya Perkins. And be sure to check out the Expo uh, 2009 this Saturday in Virginia Beach. And here's a look at some other things that are happening in Hampton Roads. Welcome back, everybody. Remember at the top of the show when I said there are a million black-owned businesses in the U.S.? Well, make that a million and one. There's a new business in Virginia Beach. It's called The Jungle Gym. And as Lisa Godley shows us, business is jumping. Combine climbing, sliding, and bouncing. Seasoned with primary colors, mix in a group of excited children, and you've got a recipe for success. But don't take my word for it. It was fun, it was fast, and when you get on it, you'll like bounce down the slide. I think it's fun and very exciting. That one was my favorite one right there. I think it's so fun here. It's so awesome. The smiles on their young patrons' faces are a constant reminder to Keisha Whitaker, Kim Thomas, and Karen Hill that this is the business for them. The three sisters made that decision after they were laid off by the Ford Motor Company in the summer of 2007. We always wanted to open our own business. We just didn't know what it was that we wanted to do. So after we had took a visit to Atlanta and we ran into an indoor inflatable part and jumped into there, it was like something that just hit me and I was like, that's it, that's it. As parents, the sisters were always looking for ways to entertain their own children. So this type of venture made perfect sense. Instead of sitting around playing video games, this offered children exercise in a fun way. The Jungle Gym opened in November of 2008, and Keisha says the most difficult part was opening a brand new business in the middle of a recession. But they have learned that people will spend money on their children. There was also the adjustment of going from employee to employer. People say all the time that when you work for yourself, you work harder than working for anybody else, and it's, it's a true statement, you do. But, I mean, if you have to work, you might as well put in the time for yourself. That way you know you're in control of your own future. Jungle Gym is open to the public six days a week and offers everything from open jump for parents who just want to bring their children in for an afternoon of fun to birthday parties and family reunions. 
Since they're closed on Mondays, the sisters set aside the day for therapeutic programs, allowing children with special needs who might require confidentiality to come in and enjoy themselves. Well, it's very important because um, it gives us an opportunity to let children who otherwise would not be able to come out and play in the general public come out and enjoy themselves. Um, most of the therapeutic children have emotional and behavioral disorders. And because their, their behaviors are so volatile and, and unpredictable, this is a good environment. We're normally not open on Monday, so we open up specifically for this group. Um, and they bring their therapists and their counselors, and it's a way for them to learn new social skills and practice those skills in an open environment. The giving back doesn't stop there. In an effort to help the local food bank, the sisters will also knock $3 off your $9 admission if you will bring in two canned goods. So what's it like running a business with your sisters? We're all pretty close, so that's never really been a problem. We get along well. Um, actually, I really enjoy it. I think it's put us closer together as a family. We've always had a close-knit family, and I think this has just made it even more closer because everyone stick with us. I mean, my dad, he does the maintenance work and pretty much everything. He comes at a drop of a dime. My mom, she pretty much watches the cub land for us, and everybody pulls together, and it's been a great experience for the Atkinson family. It really has. For another view, I'm Lisa Godley. The Jungle Gym is located on Dean Drive in the Lynn Haven section of Virginia Beach. The sisters hope to open another facility within the next two years, and we wish them well. And that's our broadcast for this week. Please visit and sign up for our weekly eView newsletter. It's a short note reminding you of upcoming show topics. You can also send us your thoughts via our website or by regular mail. The address is 5200 Hampton Boulevard, Norfolk, 23508. Next week, a candid discussion on race relations in the Obama years. We'll see you next time for another view.